Travis Kelsey is one of the best players at his position ever to touch a football. Kelsey has earned multi-Pro Bowls and multi-All-Pro team honors and has won multiple Super Bowls. This guy is legendary, yet somehow he fell all the way down to the third round. But how? How did arguably the greatest tight end of all time fall that far? What happened to the players that went before him? In this video, we'll be going over all 62 players taken before Travis Kelsey in the 2013 draft and how their careers have panned out, starting with the first overall pick by, ironically, the Kansas City Chiefs, Eric Fisher. The first overall pick was oddly between two offensive tackles, Fisher and Luke Jokel, who would go second overall to the Jacksonville Jaguars. The top of the 2013 class from a skill position and quarterback standpoint was relatively weak, resulting in offensive tackles going with the top two picks. Fisher was a starting tackle for the Chiefs for nearly a decade, making two Pro Bowls, including the 2020 season where Kansas City won the Super Bowl. After that season, Fisher would leave the Chiefs to play one season as an Indianapolis Colt before ultimately retiring at the age of 30. On the other hand, Jokel did not live up to the hype of being taken number two. He started every game he played for Jacksonville, but injuries and average play pushed him out of the league after just five seasons. Two very different stories from the top two picks. With the third overall pick, the Miami Dolphins traded up to choose Oregon outside linebacker Deion Jordan, a bust. You'll see many more busts in this draft. Jordan would start all five games in his NFL career, even missing the entire 2015 season due to a violation of the league's substance abuse policy. Jordan would only record 13 and a half sacks in his six seasons as a pro, ultimately being out of the league by 2020 after bouncing around for a while. The fourth pick, offensive tackle Lane Johnson, taken by the Philadelphia Eagles. Johnson has had one of the greatest careers of all time for a right tackle, making four all-pro teams and winning a championship in his career. Johnson is Philly royalty and was a very valuable pick at four. Picks five and six were both defensive ends with Ezekiel Ansa heading to the Detroit Lions and Barkevius Mingo to the Cleveland Browns. Yet another pair with two drastically different careers. Ansa was a Pro Bowl-level edge rusher for Detroit, even having a season with 14 and a half sacks, while Mingo never had a season with more than five sacks, as he would bounce around the league until his retirement. Pick seven was offensive guard Jonathan Cooper by the Arizona Cardinals. Cooper was a bust, an on-and-off starter who played only five seasons in his career. With the eighth overall pick, the St. Louis Rams selected offensive weapon Tavon Austin from West Virginia. Austin was one of the most exciting college football athletes of all time, but he didn't translate that into NFL success. His speed and agility made him an exciting prospect, but for whatever reason, we didn't get to see him make NFL defenders look silly. Do you think he was drafted by the wrong team, or was he to blame for the lack of success? Tell us in the comments. The next two picks would be bust. Alabama cornerback D. Milner to the New York Jets and Alabama offensive guard Chance Warmack to the Tennessee Titans. Milner would only play 21 career games before ultimately being out of the NFL due to injuries, and Warmack would be a so-so starter as a Titan before winning a Super Bowl with the Eagles as a backup. Pick 11 was Alabama lineman DJ Fluker to the San Diego Chargers. Fluker had a decent career as a starting guard. At pick 12, the Reggie McKenzie-led Oakland Raiders shockingly selected cornerback DJ Hayden. No one expected Hayden to be taken that high in the draft, typical Raiders pick. He played four seasons in Oakland, a season in Detroit, and four seasons in Jacksonville. Not bad for a major reach to last nine seasons in the league. Football aside, Hayden passed away in a tragic car accident in 2023. The next two picks would be a couple of very good defensive tackles. Sheldon Richardson to the New York Jets and Star Latuale to the Carolina Panthers. Richardson would be a one-time Pro Bowler, even winning the 2013 Defensive Rookie of the Year Award, and Latuale would be a solid contributing starter for Carolina and eventually the Buffalo Bills. Two very, very good picks considering who was taken before them. Pick 15 was Kenny Vaccaro to the Saints. Vaccaro would have a very solid career in New Orleans and eventually as a Tennessee Titan. Good pick. Pick 16, the first quarterback taken, E.J. Manuel, was selected by the Buffalo Bills. 
Manuel would only start 18 games in his career and would only throw 10 touchdowns. This quarterback class was very, very, very weak, and it starts with Manuel. Pick 17, linebacker Jarvis Jones to the Steelers, a bust according to Pittsburgh fans. The next five picks would all be Pro Bowl level players. Safety Eric Reed to the San Francisco 49ers. Offensive lineman Justin Pugh to the New York Giants. Offensive lineman Kyle Long to the Chicago Bears. Tight end Tyler Eifert to the Cincinnati Bengals. And cornerback Desmond Trufant to the Atlanta Falcons. These five players all had very, very solid careers with the exception of maybe Eifert. The next two picks would be bust defensive linemen. Defensive tackle Sharif Floyd to the Minnesota Vikings and German board defensive end Bjorn Werner to the Indianapolis Colts. Yes, his name is Bjorn Werner. Pick 25 also belonged to the Minnesota Vikings and selected cornerback Xavier Rhodes. It took a while, but Rhodes would become an absolute lockdown corner, even making first team all pro in 2017. Rhodes closed was his moniker and the name fit perfectly. Nobody got by Rhodes in single coverage when he was in his prime. With the 26th pick, the Green Bay Packers selected D-tackle Dayton Jones, a bust. Pick 27, the Texans selected Clemson wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins. What a pick. Hopkins is one of the best receivers of the last decade, if not the best, and it started here. A five-time All-Pro team member, an automatic 1,000 yards per season, a touchdown machine, the best hands a receiver can have, this guy has it all. Hopkins falling to 27 <laughs> blows our minds. With the 28th pick, the Broncos selected Sylvester Williams, an average defensive tackle who, to his credit, did help the Broncos win Super Bowl 50. With the 29th pick, the Vikings selected Corderell Patterson. Patterson has made a mind-boggling six All-Pro teams, not as a rusher, not as a receiver, but as a return man. Patterson has cemented himself as one of the top return specialists in NFL history and has been able to put up numbers for different franchises throughout his career. The 30th pick was linebacker Alec Ogletree to the St. Louis Rams. Ogletree was a very good linebacker in his career, even making the All-Pro team in 2016 for the Rams. Solid pick. Pick 31, the Dallas Cowboys took Travis Frederick. Frederick was consistently one of the best centers in football in his time, making three All-Pro teams over his career. Fantastic value at 31. 32, 33, and 34 would be a few busts. Safety Matt Elam to the Ravens, safety Jonathan Cyprian to the Jaguars, and wide receiver Justin Hunter to the Titans. However, picks 35 and 36 were a couple of goodies. Zach Ertz to the Philadelphia Eagles and Darius Slay to the Detroit Lions, a player who would ultimately become an Eagle. Two very, very good players. Pick 37 was Giovanni Bernard to the Cincinnati Bengals, a very solid running back for them. Pick 38 was linebacker Manti Teo to the Chargers, a very good player in college who was the victim of a major catfishing scandal during his tenure at Notre Dame. There's even a Netflix documentary on it. As for his NFL career, he was a contributing starter for the Chargers and the Saints in his time. With the 39th pick, the Jets selected Geno Smith. The Jets are a nightmare for quarterbacks. Just ask Mark Sanchez. They failed Geno and gave up on him, but he changed the narrative of his career with Pete Carroll as a Seattle Seahawk, becoming a top 19 quarterback in the league. Pick 40 was defensive end Tank Carradine to the 49ers. Tank would only start eight games as a pro. Pick 41 was wide receiver Robert Woods to the Bills. Woods has had a very solid career in the NFL, hitting his prime as a member of the Rams in the late 2010s. The next two picks were stinky. Offensive tackle Menelik Watson to the Raiders and cornerback Jonathan Banks to the Buccaneers. The Panthers held pick 44 and they chose Kawan Short, a Pro Bowl defensive tackle who was a huge part of their 2015 NFC Championship season, making an all-pro team that year. The next two picks would be linebackers, Kevin Minter to the Arizona Cardinals, Bust, and Kiko Alonso to the Buffalo Bills, the defensive rookie of the year runner-up who would have a very solid career. Pick 47 was another tight end, but not Travis Kelsey. The Dallas Cowboys selected Gavin Escobar, 
Escobar had 333 career receiving yards. He is not Travis Kelsey. Jerry, what were you thinking? Pick 48 would be a great one. The Steelers selected running back Le'Veon Bell. Bell was a multiple-time All-Pro in Pittsburgh and is one of the greatest running backs of his generation. Unfortunately, his career would take a massive dive after he held out due to a contract dispute, which would lead to him signing with the New York Jets. That was the beginning of the end for the former Steeler great. We're going to start flying through some of these picks because there isn't anyone super special in this range. D-tackle Jonathan Hankins to the Giants at 49. Linebacker Jonathan Bostick to the Bears at 50. David Amerson to the Washington Redskins at the time at 51. Jamie Collins to the New England Patriots at 52, who was actually very solid for the Pats. Marcus Hunt to the Cincinnati Bengals at 53. Jamar Taylor to the Miami Dolphins at 54. Vance McDonald to the San Francisco 49ers at 55. Yet another tight end not named Travis Kelsey, Arthur Brown to the Baltimore Ravens at 56. DJ Swearinger to the Houston Texans at 57. Monty Ball to the Denver Broncos at 58. Aaron Dobson to the New England Patriots at 59. Robert Alford to the Atlanta Falcons at 60. That wasn't a super talented group of guys with the exception of Collins, but pick 61 would be a ginormous talent as the Green Bay Packers would select Eddie Lacy. Lacy would have a special rookie season, winning Offensive Rookie of the Year and being named to an All-Pro team. However, after his second season, he would completely fall off. He gained a ton of weight, and he was ultimately out of the league after five seasons. What could have been? Pick 62 would be another running back, Christine Michael, to the Seahawks. And here we are, pick 63, Travis Kelsey. The Kansas City Swifties got their man. How would you redraft the first two rounds of the 2013 draft? Does Travis Kelsey go first overall? Let us know in the comments.